So I'm sure most of you have heard of the universal power switches. I designed one and a few other people designed them as well. And the goal was to swap out the failing Game Boy switches that get dirty and grimy and fail over time. Now, the problem with the universal power switches is they are a little bit too small. They're a bit too thin because these exact switches are no longer manufactured. So even though we have replacements, we all know they're not the best. The, the switches that get used on all versions of the universal power switch are just not perfect. They're quite far from it. However, I have been holding on to a secret for a while now, and that is the perfect replacement switch that's brand new manufactured. We can buy them in the thousands and they cost pennies. They're already on our store. They've been there for six months to 12 months. It's just I haven't bothered giving away the secret yet. So I think now's the perfect time. So you'll see the switch right here. And some people might recognize it. Some people might not. And you might be saying, this switch isn't going to work. If you know what this switch is. But I'm going to show you that it does perfectly well. So this switch is for a DS. So we sell these on our website. If you go to spares and parts and connectors and switches, you'll see the right here, the DS Lite power switch. You can also see we have the universal power switch here. This is the one we're talking about that isn't as good. But this is the one you want. So let me show you exactly how we install these things. So this will work on the GBA. It'll work on the SP. It'll work on the color. It'll work on the pocket. I'll show you all those in a moment. But for now, let me just show you what we do to install this switch. So first things first, obviously, remove the old switch. The way I would recommend doing this is to remove the metal cage first from the right side, watching to not knock off this resistor. We just add solder there, put the tweezers inside, and gently lift up. You don't want to force because if you force, you can flick hot solder in your face. So just be careful of that. Once that's out of the way, warm the other side up and remove the cage. Remove the old switch. And you can see this is why we replace the switches because of all the dirt inside them. And one of the techniques to fixing these and prolonging them is to just get tweezers and gently rub away all the corrosion, get some IPA, clean up inside, and there's your kind of temporary new switch that you then put back together. But the cage that comes off isn't great either, that's also loose. So it's definitely better to just replace it completely. So now to get rid of this cage, there's only these four pins holding it on. These outside cages now do nothing. So we just want to warm up with plenty of solder, those four pins, until it starts flowing onto the pins, and then you'll see the cage just moves out of the way. Like that. And that's the old switch off. So to position the switch, you want to position it so that the overall width of this switch fits central to the cutout. So you can see this cutout here. You want this switch to be sort of central to that cutout like that. And now you will see that the pads line up, just not absolutely, but they're literally close enough to blob the solder on perfectly fine. What I do find helps is instead of leaving the old solder on, just get a little bit of flux and just clean up. You don't need to worry about the outer pads. They don't normally get in the way. But definitely just clean up these inner pads first. It just helps with positioning. And just give that a clean. Now, if you place the switch back over, you can see it's easier to position because it's not catching on anything. Now, it's as simple as soldering this in place. So what I will do is apply solder to whichever pad I feel comfortable doing first. Whatever just feels more comfortable to hold. Grab the switch, tack solder on, and you can see we've got it tacked in place already. And now you can check alignment, and that looks pretty perfect to me. So now we want to make sure it's flat, which it is. And we just tack the rest of them on. So do the outer two first, and you can see they fit basically perfect. We'll reflow that one now. And then the inner ones, you can see they do cover the pins that we want to solder to. So again, it's as simple as just applying solder to the pad, and you'll find it just flows to the pin nice and easy. 
with your bridge like I've just done there. You can just desolder wick or just plonk your tweezers between to separate the ball. And that's the switch installed there. Now to secure it, this looks like it's miles away, but trust me, this is really easy and works much easier than you think. Start by applying the solder to the pad first in a big ball, and then just drag quickly over to the shell and you'll find it attaches to this really quick. So lots of solder on there, and then just touch over slightly and see how it instantly grabs and adheres. And that's a solid connection. So don't put the heat on the cage first, put the heat on the board first, fill with solder, and then just touch over. And it's that simple. So now we have the switch in. For those of you that know this is a DS Lite switch, the one thing you'll be saying is, well, when we move the switch, it goes back. And that's the problem. Simple solution, pair of tweezers, go inside, hook under the spring, as you see there. See how the tweezer arm is hooked under that spring? And just pull up. That's the little spring removed. And now look what we have. An absolutely perfectly sized and positioned power switch. And you'll find when you put this in your console, it works absolutely perfect. Let's just run a quick test. And you can see now, looking the power switch works every time, as it will do with this being a brand new switch. So that's the perfect replacement switch now for the GBA. You'll find, if you get the GBC, that you have exactly the same thing. Remove the old switch, place this new switch in position, like so. And you'll see, once it's in position, these pads solder over. So in this case, pin 3 goes to the left, the pin C goes to the middle, and it doesn't matter if you bridge number 2, it goes nowhere. And pin 1 goes to pin 1. So whip off the power switch like we did the other one. Grab another power switch and position it on the board exactly where we want it. And in the case of if you want this to lie totally flat, you'll also see there's two little nubbins here that just protrude on the switch ever so slightly. So you can just snip them on. And they're really small. You can melt them with an iron or snip them off if they get in the way. Or just leave them on. It really doesn't make much of a difference. Just depends how fussy you are. But you can see here, pin 2 goes nowhere, so we don't really care what happens to pin 2, whether it shorts or not. It's the other three pins we need to get lined up. So again, if you place this switch, in this case here, so just inside of the line there. Tack the first pin in, and then check your position. That you're happy that the position's right, and you're looking for central between this line and this line, being central between the two ends of the switch. So that's in line perfectly fine. And then all that's left again, blob solder, over that. And on this one, we just do that. And so long as you get the middle pin, uh, it really doesn't matter uh, what happens there. So you can't really go wrong. Same principle for securing it in the shell. Plenty of solder on there. And then touch over. Plenty of solder, bridge over. Hook in to get the spring, like so, and then just pull the spring out. And that's now a Game Boy Color with the perfect switch. Let's give that one a quick test like the other. Ground, and that's presuming this console works, but I think it does. Yep, and there's the power light. So that's on, off, on, off. So that one's fine as well. And then finally, let's just take a quick look at the SP. I haven't got a pocket to hand, but that fits exactly the same as it does the color. Just whip off the DM kit first. And finally, let's check for position again. So this switch is longer, but if we look at the switch here, central wise, again, if you line up when the switch is all the way to the right, with the switch over lane on the right, you can see it wants to sit in the shell quite a bit, or you can trim. Uh, the nub, if you find out it catches, I'd probably solder it here and trim, otherwise it's going to sit too far back. But you can see visually that this will fit just the same. Pretty much aligns exactly like the GBA did. 
So let's just take this cage off. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's a water damage marker. <laughs> that's quite funny that Nintendo did that. And then same as every other one. I'm sure you know by now. Place the switch visually in position. And if you want to, just cut these little nibs off first. But as you've seen with the GBA, it's not an absolute requirement. They will work with them on. Just depends how much you want it to sit totally flat. If you're really gentle, you can sometimes do it without even nudging the switch. But if the switch moves and you've got one pin in place like we have now, you're free to just basically grab the switch and then position it as you feel free while you've got one point attached. So looking at that, I'd say that's about where we want it. And you can move it inwards a little bit. You don't want to go too far. Otherwise, it becomes hard to solder the points. But I'd say there's a nice position. Lob the solder on the remaining four. Just nudge that in as we're doing it. There we go. So pin two solders to pin two. Pin one to one. And then you've got common one and two, and these are shorted together anyway, but they fit in alignment pretty much perfect, so we might as well just solder them on. With those in place, again, what looks like a massive jump for the solder, we should find, hopefully, is not that big of a jump. So plenty of solder on the pad, and you can see it's just jumped over nice and easily. Same for this one, just plenty of solder on the pads. And you can see why we don't want to touch the shield first, like I've just done there by mistake, because now it's going to start wicking up there. But I think we'll be just about okay. There we go. And you can see why you don't want it attaching to that first. It'll start covering this hole and warming up the metal and the plastic. But I think we still did that fine. So if we just pull the spring out now, grab there, pull spring out, and there's yet another switch. And there we can see the lineup of all three where we have the GBA, the SP, the color, and it works on Pocket as well. So hopefully this helps you guys to keep your consoles living for longer. And we finally have a good power switch that doesn't require any compromise. The universal power switches were a good stopgap, and there's still an option for those that might want to use them. But I would highly recommend now just simply using the DS Lite power switches. Uh, we've got thousands of these in stock. Um, we made sure we did this before announcing that they fit for the consoles because this should be a fairly big thing. You guys have been wanting this for a good while and nobody's solved the problem yet. And although I solved this problem about a year ago, I didn't give away the secrets just yet. I just wanted to give people time to see if anyone discovered this. But I think it's fair to say nobody was going to discover this. So it was time to just share with you guys exactly how you do this. And now there's no more need for universal power switches. If you guys like this video, please do share it around, get people to know us share the Discord links, and let's bring this community together more and continue to make great mods together. That's it for this one, and I'll catch you in the next.